Hi and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to show you an updated version of the hoop skirt. However, unlike last time, I am making a full circle skirt instead of a half circle skirt. However, I still use the website to get the calculations for my circle skirt. Once I draw out the radius for the waist and the radius for the hem, I do cut two of these panels and putting them together should equal up a full circle when spread out on the floor. And then I go ahead and cut out my waistband. I do measure the bottom of the circle skirt, the circumference, because I will be adding a ruffle to the bottom. If you add a ruffle, the best course of action is to cut out three times your actual length of the item that you're putting it on to get a good, nice ruffle. So here I'm cutting out four inch strips to create that ruffle. And once I cut out all those strips, I go ahead and sew them together and I serge all the edges. And then I go ahead and give it a half inch rolled hem before I gather it. And to gather it, all I did was take a clump of fabric, scrunch it up, and run underneath my machine and sewed it down. And I did this until I had the length I needed. With the ruffle done, I go ahead and decide to add more lace and frills to it. I have this wide flat lace that I went ahead and sewed on the ruffle as well. With the ruffle done, go ahead and set that aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew up one of the side seams on the circle skirt. I go ahead and lay the circle skirt flat and I do start measuring out and marking my circle skirt with a pencil to know where I'm going to put the channels for the boning. I do use this white Grogain ribbon that I bought a while back ago and use that as my channels. One thing to note is to make sure the channels line up at the back seam because you will have to overlap the cut ends of the boning.
With the channels marked out, I go ahead and sew up the back seam. I do leave about four or five inches unsewn at the top so that way I, it's easier to get on and off. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the ribbon to make the channels. And I primarily use the top line for each channel to uh, run along. Once I sew that on, then I go ahead and sew on the bottom part. I do leave an opening on one part of it so I can insert the boning later. And with the channel sewn on, I go ahead and sew the ruffle onto the bottom. And I go ahead and decide that it needs more lace. So I took this other two inch flat lace and sewed it onto the top of each boning channel. Where I left the opening in the back seam, I go ahead and make my own bias tape and cover that raw edge up. And for the waistband, I go ahead and cut the interfacing for it and iron that on as well. I do fold the waistband in half, iron it down, and then I iron the interfacing on, and then I iron up one side about a half inch.
and then I attach the waistband to the skirt. After top stitching the waistband on, I go ahead and attach two hooks and bars. And now it's time to go ahead and add the boning. This time since I want the volume and the strength, I don't add just the boning. I actually add wire and boning to each channel. And the easiest way to do this is if you don't want to buy the metal boning for a traditional hoop skirt is to take your corset boning since it is so on i take an 18 gauge wire and zigzag stitch that onto the boning itself and then put it in the channels i do add masking tape to the cut ends of the boning and wire combo and then i overlap the ends to create a seamless circle and once uh, all the boning is in the channels, I go ahead and hand stitch the openings closed. And with that, the hoop skirt is done. And like before, it's not perfect, but it does the job that I have intended for it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next week. Bye.